Something we often have to do in lab analysis is construct a standard curve. The standard curve is a graph that's based on known values and the results you've obtained through the analysis procedure. So for example, here we have a glucose fructose concentration in micromoles, and we have a range here of naught to 10. And we've carried out the lab analysis on these known concentrations and obtained these absorbance readings. And we measured each sample in duplicate and taken an average. So to construct the graph, first of all, we need to select the values we want the graph to be formed from. So we select our concentrations here, then we hold control and select our mean absorbance readings. We're then going to insert. And over here, we have all the different kinds of graph we can insert. We want this bottom one down here, which is a scatter graph, and we want the first one. We do not want the ones that connect the data points. We just want the ones that are just the data points on their own. And here we have our graph constructed from our values here. Now, before we do anything else, we just need to clear up a few things. So firstly, we want to get rid of the title here. Excel always likes to put a, a title at the top. When we put this sort of uh, figure into our work, we always put the title in the caption, which will go at the bottom when we actually include it in the work. Second thing you'll notice that Excel doesn't do is that it doesn't give us any titles for our axes. These are very easy to add. You just go to chart, design, and then add chart element and axis titles. We've got primary and vertical. We want both of these. So select one and then the other. And then we can label up our axes like so. The next thing we need to do is add a line of best fit. This is very simple to do. We just click on one of the data points, right click and go to add trend line. And you see Excel has put in a line of best fit for us. You'll see sometimes that it adds a negative value on the y-axis here. We don't need that, so it's very easy to get rid of it. You just click on the uh, values for the y-axis here. Go to this third tab along here, which is the, the bars here. And you can see it's automatically put a negative value in the bounds section. Just change that back to zero and it should disappear. So now we've got our line of best fit. We can use this to find out the concentration of glucose, fructose and micromoles of our unknowns. So here we have um, taken our samples and we've run the analysis twice on them again and we've taken an average. So normally what you would do if you're doing this manually, you would take your value here, your absorbance, and you go up on the wire axis up to 0.232 then you go along to your line of best fit and then down so it should be some 3.8 3.7 something like that and again for this one 0.45 go up to 0.45 along to the line down and it should be 7.6 7.7 something like that so doing it manually that way we, we can get a, an idea of what, what the value is, but it's not very accurate. The good thing about doing this in Excel is that we can use mathematics to calculate what this value should be rather than estimating it by going along and down. So the way we do that is first of all, we need to add the equation for this line to the chart. And we see that in our options here for our trend line. We go to display equation on chart. And here we have the equation for this particular line. And what this equation says is that a y value is equal to 0.0617 times x minus 0.0023. So what that means is if we know the x value, all we need to do is times it by 0.0617, then minus 0.0023, and that will give us the y value. The problem is we have our y values, but we do not have our x values. So this equation as it is, is no good to us. So we need to rearrange this formula and rearrange this formula to, to give us x rather than y is x is equal to 
y plus 0.0023, because that's been moved to the other side of the equation, divided by, again, because we've moved this number to the other side of the equation, 0.0617. So if I take this value and I write it down here to remind us, we can then use that equation to find out our unknowns. So in our first cell here, we're going to type equals to show Excel that we want to write a formula. We select our Y, which is this value here. Then we do plus 0.0023. And we're going to put that in brackets to make sure that this part of the calculation is done first. Then we're going to divide that by 0.0. 617. And we get a value of 3.789. It's always worth whenever you do any calculations like this just to double check that the value it's giving you makes sense. So let's do our manual method again. So 0 0.232, go up to there, along to our line and down. Yeah, that looks like it would be about 3.789. Now, if we want to apply this formula to our other unknown, all we need to do is click on this little square on the bottom right of the cell here and drag it down. And that will apply the same formula, but to this value here. So again, just to check this, 0 0.450, we go up and along then down. Yeah, I would say that's about 7.32. So that's one method of finding out your unknown values using a standard curve in Excel. The other way you can do it is you can use a formula to calculate the unknowns without using a graph at all. To do this, we're going to go to formulas and we're going to go to more functions, statistical, and then go down to forecast linear. It now wants me to put in the values to make this calculation work. So x will be our unknown. So in this case, 0.232. We then need to put in the known y's and x values. For this formula to work correctly, you actually need to put the x's into the y's and the y's into the x's. So our known x's are our concentrations here, so we'll just select those. And our known y's are the absorbances here, so we select those. And then click OK. You should end up with a very similar, almost identical, to the value you got doing it through the first method. Again, we can just drag this down to apply it to our other unknown. You will notice that they are ever so slightly different and that of course is because the first method is based on this line of best fit whereas the second method is based on the data as is. So you will or you're very likely to get a, a slight difference between the two. Well I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.